Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Attention Please podcast now on video. If you like this podcast, kindly like, share, subscribe. You know what to do. So for those of you who follow my podcast on video, you will notice that this is a different room from the one where I usually record. Um, all, the, all the action figures are gone. And that's because I'm in a new house. I've, I've changed house. I, I used to rent all my life. I've bought a new house. So this is the new house. And obviously, we haven't moved in properly. It will possibly take us close to a year before it happens. So this is the way it's going to look for, for some time before I, and, and we, I'm going to change room. This is not the room where I hope to continue the podcast. But for now, this is the temporary, this is the temporary, it's a kind of a side closet. It's like a huge side walk-in closet that I'm currently in. And um, so that's, that's the reason why it's kind of bare and why there is like stuff behind it. So for those of you who listen to this podcast as podcasts are supposed to be, you won't notice the difference. So today I'm going to do a review of Lust Stories Part 2 on Netflix. Uh, so this is going to be full of spoilers. So before I get to the spoilers part, um, just my TLDR of, of, of Lust Stories Part 2 is it's definitely worth a watch. Um, it is definitely worth a watch for those of you who are interested in, in the concept of lust, lust as distinct from love. Um, I think that the quality of Netflix India programming is very poor. It's very poor. And compared to that, this is certainly, certainly better. Uh, I wouldn't say it's great, but it's definitely worth two hours of your, of your time. So for those of you who want to go in without knowing anything about it, all I can say is it's much better than Last Stories Part 1, which I saw years ago, and I don't remember anything about it, except that it was terrible. Which, which should tell you how bad it was. It wasn't so bad it's good that I remember. It was just the kind of bad that you just want to forget. So that was, but I don't think I'll forget Less Stories Part 2. I think it's it's fairly well done. And as I said, definitely worth your time. So now the, the spoilers begin. So the first, so, so Less Stories Part 2 is made up of basically four small movies or movie lets. Um, each of them has been done by a different director. Uh, one thing, and even this before I get to the spoiler part is don't lose patience in the first 20 minutes because the first movie let is by far the worst. Um, it actually gets better as it goes on. So be patient, you know, check your phone while the first 20 minutes is going on because there is definitely a payoff later. Uh, I think it, it vastly becomes better as it, as it kind of goes on. So Let's talk about each of the movie lets, small movies. I just made that term off. So the first movie let is the name, the title is Made for Each Other. So the basic premise is that there is uh, Nulal Thakur and Angad Bedi, their, their fiancés, they're going to get married. And when they're having this, uh, you know, Samdi, Samdan conversation with all the cliches, suddenly the, the grandmother played by Nina Gupta, who's, who's uh, Nal Thakur's grandmother um, walks in and uh, she says, uh, you know, have you guys had sex? You know, have you, you know, taken each other out for a test drive? You know, if you buy a car, you know, of course. And of course, this shocks, uh, you know, both the families because they're shocked that the grandmother is talking so openly about sex. And then later on, she has a conversation with her granddaughter about, you know, you know, orgasms and female orgasms, and which, which she says, you know, Mount Fuji. And this whole, you know, forward, hot grandma who's very in touch with her sensuality, we've seen this before, actually. So none of this, none of this is particularly surprising or insightful. And all of it is very unconvincing because on, on, on one, one hand, there are two things which I think are very unconvincing. First of all, I'm sorry, I, I just don't buy the fact that Munal Thakur and Angad Bedi, the way they are shown in the movie, aren't having premarital sex. I mean, these are the guys who, who, who go to, um, you know, all India, Bakchod, open my comedy club kind of people. And that's, that's how they're shown. So I, I don't understand why they're not having premarital sex. So the fact that they have premarital sex after their grandmother tells them to, it's, it's kind of strange, it's kind of unconvincing. I think it, it's it's max of lazy writing. There's also this this kind of sub story which is not developed is that you know the 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 father of Murla Thakur, who's, who's the son of the of the forward grandma, 
that he's also his his marriage is also kind of sexually cooled down. They don't have sex anymore, and she also the grandmother also points that out. And at the end, they kind of you know the 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 husband and the wife become warm, and it's it's, it's kind of half baked. Nobody understands why what what happened. You mean they just he just needed his mother to to say this. It was all very strange. It was all very strange and strange in a bad way. And the, the most important thing was Nina Gupta. So first of all, Nina Gupta is a great actor and, and she does very well in, in, in the movie. There's nothing that, that you can fault her on. But why is Nina Gupta playing a 75 year old or a 70 year old grandma? I mean, this is, we, we on one hand, we're talking about a new progressive Bollywood where there are roles for women which are appropriate for their age. Like just as men like Akshay Kumar still plays a college kid. We all know that, that that's a problem with with, with, with male characters, that male characters never grow old. Everybody plays a college kid or like a 30 year old now. But with women, it's been the, the, the opposite. After a certain age, they're all promoted to either a Babi Ji or an Ani Ji. So I am surprised that Nina Gupta, who's definitely not you know that age is being, she, she has like white hair. She's, I mean, what, why is Nina Gupta playing that? I mean, she's a good actor, but I think, I mean, again, it, it was part of the, it was, this is part of how badly Art Val, Val, Valki, I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's, he's the director of Chini Kam. It was just, it was just basically at the level of most Netflix content was terrible. The second one, and, I, and the only reason why I kind of sat through was that I'd heard a good review about the next one, which uh, was uh, The Mirror, directed by Konkona, uh, Shen Sharma. And, um, I was I was looking forward to seeing it, and and again, um, I heard a lot of good things about it, but I didn't quite like it that much because, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll tell you why I didn't like it. So for, unlike the first one, made for each other, it had a very interesting premise, um, and it was not something which I was expecting. So for those of you who've seen it, again, you know what it is. You know there is uh, there is there is this character who's like a, a, a professional woman who's single and. You, and, and, and who comes home and, and finds the housekeeper in bed in her empty apartment with someone she, I don't think she doesn't, she doesn't know who, who it is, it's, it's her husband. So the housekeeper who lives in a chawl has, has a lot of kids and you know, it's crowded. So in order to, for her to have, uh, you know, conjugal relations with her husband, they sneak up into her employer's apartment when it's empty and she's, she's doing it when her employer comes in and obviously um, she's shocked and the employer is played by Tilatama Shom, who's, who's obviously a very good actor, does an excellent job in her facial expressions when she first comes in, sees them, and, and it's all, the camera is fully on her face and that's the, that, that's, that, that's, that's a good director. I mean, that's Congress and Sharma being, you know, Death in the Goon showed that she's a very good director and, and she continues. I just wish she made more movies. Um, so Tilatama Shom is very good here. And she, she, she plays this, this kind of, uh, you know, professional, strong professional woman at work. He's single. It's obvious he's very busy. He doesn't have any time. I'm, I'm guessing time to have relationships. Again, they don't show any of that. And then she comes in and, and, and then she kind of gets this voyeuristic, uh, uh, you know, first of all, she first watches kind of like, oh my God, I have to see this. What are they doing? And then she realizes that it's turning it on. Um, and they kind of, she doesn't tell the housekeeper anything. Um, initially, she was thinking of firing her on the spot, but she doesn't tell her. And then she kind of sneaks in, you know, kind of sits there and starts watching. And 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 they show her basically masturbating also while she watches um, uh, the housekeeper and her husband. And here's where I think the thing goes off the rails, in my opinion, is that till now it's fine. And I think this is where they should have just stopped. Um, and, and the housekeeper also comes to know um, that she's being watched. I think this is where they should have stopped the movie let. Because in a movie let is like a short story. You, you leave something for the imagination. You leave a certain open-endedness. And that the last one actually does very well, the last of the movie lets. But you have to have a little bit of open-endedness. The mirror kind of tries to close all the loops in a way. And I think to its detriment. So what, what they show is that, you know, they discover each other and then they start shouting and, you know, the Tilatama fires the housekeeper and the housekeeper says, you know, 
I know what you do. I know that, you know, you basically touch yourself while watching us. And then she goes and, you know, tells obviously gossips and then everybody kind of like that weird lady in that apartment. Um, and then, and then even more unrealistically, her husband comes to know and her husband, you know, says, oh, watching her turned you on, didn't it? All of it was just like, okay, now we have kind of gone beyond. I mean, it's, it's okay. Now everybody seems to be okay with this and everybody seems like this is normal. So you're turned on by watching, telling us by what your, your, your employer watching you while you're doing this. I mean, at that, and then at the end, they kind of meet while doing subsidy shopping and then they kind of make up and she joins. And it's kind of hinted at the end, maybe that they, that she kind of does the exactly thing, the exact same thing that they start, she starts watching her again. But I think this is where you, you over, you do what is known as over exposition. And sometimes in books, you have to do over exposition because you, you, you have a varied audience, but in, a, in something like, you know, when you're doing prestige, prestige TV, like Netflix, you absolutely shouldn't. You should absolutely leave things unsaid. And given that Pankura Shen Sharma is such a good director, uh, and, and, and her directorial touches are throughout, it's, it's, it's the best directed of all the four, make no doubt. It is, it is way above the direction abilities, way above the rest. But I think that that's why I kind of lost it. At the end, when the husband says, oh, you get turned on by, by having your, your employer watch you, everything just becomes kind of too scripted. It, this, this is not reality. They would have just left it. They would have just left it at the fact that both of them have a silent understanding that this is the way it's going to be. That the kind of, a, you know, I know what you do. You know what I do. You get to use my house. I get to watch you. And so... None of us speak about it and both of us get our rocks off. So I would have thought that that would have been a, a, a nice, funny ending and, and kind, of, uh, kind of a deep insight into the transactional nature of, of what lust is. It's, it's reciprocity, right? You do something for me, I do something for you. And over here, it's, uh, it's not the husband, wife or, or the lover thing. It's, it's, it's a strange dynamic. So, that was interesting, and I think they should have left it at that. Which leads us to the third one, which was directed by Shujaya Ghosh. Its title was uh, A Sex with the X. And I've forgotten what the fourth one was actually. I think Teal Chattars, and that was directed by Amit Sharma, which was the last one. So Sex with the X. Um, and again, by the way, for those of you, please don't listen to this podcast with your, like, with audio on or like use you use earphones for this because you know obviously when you're talking about lust stories and you're deconstructing lust stories and like things are a little bit more sexual than they usually are if my podcast is i mean i can't do anything it's the story right so sex with the ex again i'm not going to go over the story um i i saw it coming it had some similarity i would say with one of my books a little bit uh so I kind of saw that coming because of, I'll tell you what was the tell. The tell was the hue of the sky in the shots that it was, this wasn't reality. Um, but here is where I think with, in contrast with the mirror where Shujoy Ghosh gets it right. It's not, a, it's not a particularly original story. It's not like anybody who's seen this, seen this before. Like, you know, the guy's dead, he's, he's imagining things. But what was interesting about it, and again, here's where I, and, and I have to get a bit ribald, tribal, I don't know how to pronounce it. But the thing about, um, about, the, uh, about the character played by Vijay Verma is that, and this is where, again, I think he doesn't show it, but Vijay Verma's, you know, her first wife who, 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 he, who got murdered, essentially, that's the, that's the twist, um, is, is it was not an attractive woman. So it's not an attractive woman, but when you see her for the first time, she's wearing this ex extremely sensuously wrapped sari. And you would, you would wonder what's going on. Why is this lady who is like this you know, teaching, uh, you know, choir singing to old people, why is she dressed in such a sensual Sri Devish sari? Um, so you, and, and they never really tell you why. Then there is another scene where uh, Vijay Verma 
oh, is checking out her discarded bra and trying to see what the size of the bra is. This is strange. It's supposedly his ex-wife. Why is he? What is what is going on? And at some point when he starts having sex with her, he again makes a comment about you know her breasts and how and it's never really revealed what, what was going on. And I was, was seeing some discussion on Twitter or Reddit where people were like not understanding. What, they were saying this was a bad one. What was what was going on? But then here's the thing which Richard Jagos doesn't tell you is that Vishay Verma is one of his big problems. And that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the hidden joke is that he's attracted towards extremely bugsome women. So remember when he dies, um, what happens? <laughs> the, 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 the lady basically takes off her lingerie you know, he sees it and that's it. He died. That, 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 that thing is, is, is such a burst of lust that he immediately crashes his car and dies. Now, in his first marriage, you could see that that was something he missed in his wife. So at the end, they, 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 they show his wife as having a buck tooth. So that was not there in, the, in, in his, so he's imagining his wife. And that's the thing in this whole episode, he's imagining his wife as a fantasy, as his fantasy. So the ghost basically um, appears to him as his fantasy of what his wife should have been. And that's, and it's absolutely caked with lust. There is nothing, <laughs> is, is, and, and, and that's why it's lust story. It's his projection of what turns him on. And that's what he is seeing in, his, in the ghost who is his wife. And I think that was interesting. I actually liked that part. And I also like the fact that, like the part that didn't explain that. Uh, so th that to me is good prestige TV, and that's funny, and it's um, and it's interesting. I mean, I I I, I like things like that, and it's kudos to uh, uh, kudos to Shuja Ghosh for 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 being so subtle. I'm pretty sure there was pressure on him to make it explicit. So again, people were shocked at you know why is Tamanna Bhatia? Well, why does she have like a? But because that's Tamanna Bhatia that too. Why, why is she kind of has, has, has a big hole, you know, a big gap between the two teeth and she doesn't have it before? And why is she like uber sexy before and in the past she's not? But that's, that, because that's the truth. And what, what we are seeing is basically Vijay Verma's projection of what he would have liked her to be. And since he's dead and he's in kind of this nether world, that is what is appearing to him. And of course, the thing is that the, 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 the ghost basically wants him to confess to his crime. And again, of course, there are plot holes and everything, but you know, this, you're not supposed to take this seriously. I liked it. I think this was the this was possibly the best in terms of I enjoyed it the most. So the, it brings us to the darkest and the more conventional, you know, male gaze erotica, which is Til Chatta, which is directed by Amit Sharma. It is, it was uh, in almost at the level of a Ullu web series, I would say. So in terms of its, you know, erotica, it was, it was, it was, it was maybe it had crossed the line. <laughs> Sometimes I felt, um, so it was getting into that, you know, that that Ullu web series. For those of you who who don't know what I'm talking about, well, you're a good person. Um, but it 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 has a shocking ending. <laughs> it has an absolute shocking ending, um, where where of course Kajol, you know finds out that it's her son who's had, uh, not her husband, who, who she's kind of setting up to have, have sex with somebody who's carrying a deadly disease. It's not him, but her son who, who kind of is there, but she doesn't see him as like somebody who would be a target. And she sets it up beautifully, but she just forgets one little thing. And again, I think um, this suffers from, again, the first place where I say it suffers from miscasting. I mean, I used to be a huge fan of Kajol. So when I say this, I say this with the sadness of an, you know, of a fan, a real fan. I used to have my Kajol poster in my computer. There was only one poster. It was of Kajol. So I was a huge fan of Kajol. But Kajol isn't a good actor. I mean, now I realize this. Um, my, um, uh, my love for Kajol in the 90s was not driven by her acting abilities. Okay. Uh, and I didn't realize it then. I used to think she was a good actor, but now I realize, oh, not, maybe she's not a good actor. She's not really a good actor. And I think it shows also here. She's somehow not convincing in that role. I, I think that she's miscast. Um, even in that milieu, in that kind of, you know, Uttar Pradesh, you know, 
old feudal lord who like basically has considers all women to be his in his kingdom. He can do whatever he wants and nobody will stop him. I mean, Kajol just doesn't just doesn't seem to be a fit. Everybody else looks to be a fit, but she doesn't look to be a fit. And sometimes it's not just a, the physical fit. It's also the acting and the way she comes across. And she just doesn't, she just doesn't, she just seems to be Kajol. That's it. And I think that was the problem with Tilchetta. I, I don't know what the obligation was to cast her in that role. I, I'm pretty sure there were a lot of other people who would have done much better in the role. Tabu, for instance, would have been perfect in that role. Um, but I, that was the only thing that brought me out. But as a story, I think it was the best story of all of them. Um, I think the surprise, the, the twist at the end was very well done. You don't see it coming. Uh, and, 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 and I really liked the way it ended. And I think that was what what Last Stories 2 was about. I, I, I think that the last, even the, 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 other than the first one, I think all of them are definitely worth watch, worth a watch. I mean, my, my, my criticism of the second should not be taken very seriously. It's okay, it's good. It's just that I expected a little bit more from Konkona. And I think she'd almost nailed it, but I think she just like added 15 minutes to the end, which she absolutely didn't. She would have stopped. There was even a scene where I would have told I would have expected it to stop. I was expecting at that point of time the transition to the next to come. And I would have said, wow, but it kept on continuing. <laughs> and that was when I kind of got out of it. So again, well done. Uh, I think this was this was good content from Netflix. And you know, I, I, I hope to see them doing more of this. I mean, I've always been very disappointed by the stuff that Netflix India puts out. And, and the reason why they put out, I think, is again things that I've talked about before, that that these that Netflix and basically all of these OTT platforms are, are basically a revolving door for people who work in the big you know, Dharma productions and other places, all, all the big studios. And so they basically focus only on the big names and they also want to be in their good books. So that's why, you know, original storytellers, people who you don't, who not big names, um, like for instance, Archie, you know, that, that monstrosity. I mean, when the trailers, you know, what, what, what the hell is going on? But there were no problem, you know, getting, getting top billing in an OTT, no problem because of the names associated with the project. I mean, all, all Nepo kids basically. So unfortunately, and this is not the way Netflix in the US works or Amazon Prime in the US works, but this is a particularly Indian thing. I mean, ultimately they are all Indian employees. So that's the way it works there. So that's why Netflix content particularly has been terrible, I think. Uh, but I think this is this this was one of one of the better ones. It could have been better, but in conclusion, I would say that you know when Net Love, Love Stories three comes out, maybe three or four years down the line, I'm not going to start with saying I've forgotten what Love Stories part two was. No, it was it was definitely worth remembering. So uh, thanks a lot for listening, and I hope to be back soon. Bye bye.